Oh, so you're only going to Fort Worth? You're being closer, obviously, yeah. back in this yeah. I don't know what I was thinking. And that was our last trip before. Yeah, original. I went in Keller. Yeah. Oh, it's we shot late. Like, and our machine shop here, since since Ace was here, the last time we met two CNC machines. We met the CNC lane and the CNC building machines. Helps us a lot with our high volume parts and intricate parts. You can see on the pallets and different things some of the parts of the machine. for the tilter whirl there'll be a shaft sticking up through there and that's what the car sits on and spins around on the tilter whirl hmm. so the tilter whirl is that like a no we we bought out the cylinder manufacturing in 2011 and we're we're still building parts and everything for the tilter whirl from the original drawing, we have two tilted worlds in stock. In fact, we have a classic model with uh, the old cars and uh, kind of a county fair theme on it. And then we have a, a new shark ride that we have won in California. Actually, we're working on three. We've got a jab piece that's sold in Taiwan. Uh, most of the parts are over here towards our sandblast area. Uh, waiting for paint colors from Taiwan. And uh, we'll be shipping it over, and then we're building another giant loop. And just on speculation. And then we have this jumping jumbo trailer here that we're working on, which is a spin wrap. So. so. I know that it's tough to get stuff from uh, Asia over here. So far, no. Uh, we shipped, we shipped a, a giant loop to Israel um, back in March and didn't have any trouble. We were worried about it. We didn't have any trouble getting it shipped over. So. That building over there, that building over there, This is our welding and fab area here. Over on the fab side over here we have a CNC plasma torch where we cut out all of the side sections, everything for our, our giant loop, any of the shapes we have. This, this is what we call a drive leg that <coughs> actually propels the giant loop and the super loop. All of these shapes were cut out. Uh, all of the pieces on the pallets. We can cut stainless, uh, we can cut steel, we can cut aluminum with it. All of the different shapes on all of those pallets over there. This is this is fencing and stuff for, I guess the Taiwan giant loop is what this is. And then we have some uh, intermediates and some uh, platforms for a tilt in progress right here. They're just white on paint and uh, coating. And then the beams and structure here for the next giant loop that we're starting. That's 36 inch beam, 135 pound per foot beam. 
those washers that we're holding the door, well, I don't guess there's any holes in anything yet, but this whole, this whole base sets down on bolts and you put a nut and a washer on there, set it on it, and that's how you level the giant loop when it's out in the, in the park. And then we have our fresh brakes and rolls and shear punches, saws, all over there. What's the difference between a giant loop and a super loop? About 20 feet, I think. Uh, the super loop is a portable model. The giant loop is a stationary model and, and a little taller. About 16 feet different. Okay. And the track is much wider. And then we have a 100 footer in uh, Six Flags over Texas and up in uh, uh, Gurney. We have the 10 ton hoist, two 10 ton hoist in the center here that we load stuff out on trucks. And then we have two 5 ton hoist here in this area where all the welding and everything is done. This is, this is the jig where these, these sections are put in uh, and tacked together. Once they're tacked up and ready to come out, then we set them out here and tack them even better. Then they go into the circle and that's where they're fully welded in a circle so that when it's finished, it's still a circle. That's pretty important. <laughs> you can see back over here on this back wall, we have some harnesses in production that, that hold you into the train. We'll send those off and get them coated with the polyurethane. This tubing is the track tubing that goes in the giant loops as the wheels roll on. This side of the road we got is where we do all of the little fab work. We build all of the trains over here. We build the undercarriages over here. We build fencing, all of the small items with all the smaller toys are where we fab all of this stuff. We currently have about 40 employees. Uh, we've, we've had as many as 50 in the past. But with things as slow as they were last year, we've had some people leave. Larson, Jeff Novotny kept everybody on during the pandemic and kept us busy doing rides for the future. Uh, and we're one of the few manufacturers that, he, that kept everybody on. Everybody else laid everybody off and just kept a small crew. So we're very fortunate. Is business starting to pick back up now that we're starting to be on it? Parts sales are doing really, really good. And like I say, we sold one to Israel during the pandemic. We sold one to Taiwan during that. And we have a bunch of people kicking tires out of it, which is more than we had this time last year. Nobody wanted to talk anything. But, it, you know, the parks are still waiting to see what happens this summer before they decide just what they're going to do. So. We built the first hundred footer. We used to have bathrooms and, and, and office facilities back here. But to build it, we had to take those out because it takes this whole shop nearly to set a hundred footer up. To be able to still get around it. This is 150 foot long this way, so there's just 25 foot at each end, and you still have your jig that you have to have. So this is a pretty big project. So how do we touch it? Seven, seven, seven. It's the same basic structure uh, as, as our giant loop, 20 meter loop. 
find his cougar sitting over there in painting, ready to go out. It's one of the things we built while we were up there in the painting. So we have a flying scooter, we have a two tilt world, and then we're working on this guy. Who just put in a new coaster up in the northeast and opened it up this year? Jersey Devil, Jersey. Great Adventure. Great Adventure. And then this is our paint shop. These are the holes that I'm talking about that fill the washers. This is, this is the hole that the boat goes through here. This is part of the base. There'd be a nut and a washer on the bottom side and then that sits on it and then we put a nut and a washer on the top side. To, to level everything. We have another we have another flying scooter tower over there. And these are nurturing sections for giant loop and wheel carriers for the giant loop. And then we have we have uh, sweeps over there for flying scooters. We we do all of our big painting in this shop and then all of our seat part painting in there. And this conveyor system is pretty nice. We're able to Put stuff on racks here in there, paint it, and then bring it back out to let it dry. like an assembly line at Ford or GM. They started the tractors over there that worked their way through this shop, put together out there and out the door. So, uh, in 74, he had the tractor division here and he had the amusement division in Crest and Barnes there. And then when, I think it was 86 or 87, whenever the farm crisis was and all the farm equipment went south, then he moved the amusement division to here, built tractors and amusement rides both here. And then we finally just sold the tractor division off. This is kind of a new thing. This is a door that we're working on for a gondola for uh, our hubless wheel, where it's an automatic door that opens and closes where you get into the gondolas as you're going around the loop. It'll be on a giant loop frame, but it'll have 24 gondolas, 12 on each side. I don't know if anybody's seen our, our gondola ride that we have up in Canada. We have one in a mall up in Canada. And it'll be similar to that in design. And this is our assembly area here. This is the bag for the jumping gondolas that we're putting together right now. And then this will be the center. I've been with all of the sweeps and arms and cylinders on it to, to, to make it go up and down. This is pretty well where everything's assembled small, the big stuff we have to assemble in that center area of the welding shop. And then this is a base for one of the flying scooters. Uh, there's two motors yet to be put on here in, with pinions on to drive. It's on a Yeah. Yeah, by himself. That's right. 
Yeah, that would end all. Now, how long have you worked in this industry? I've been here since 98. Oh. I'm the purchasing hey, agent. Get away from the blueprint. No. <laughs> <laughs> Not too many secrets over there. <laughs> Not too many. <laughs> <laughs> but you guys are something fun. Yeah, but one could be too many for them. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the people that work there, I mean, is their primary um, career path, they start like in welding and they just end up in amusement? It, it varies. Uh, when I first started, I, I'm going to retire in a year and a half, so when I first started in working here, there was half a dozen, maybe 10 shops in the Plainview area within 10 miles that did fabrication, welding fabrication. So we had we had these size buildings, 10 or 11 of them, all over this area. And, and welders, you know, were easy to get. Now there's, there's one, and that's us. So it's really hard to find welders. We have two schools here that train welders and, and we get them from there and that, that helps a lot. But we usually hire people for their abilities at the time, whether it's assembly there or paint here or fab over there or welding. And, and in machine shop, especially with our CNC equipment, you really need people that, that are trained and know what they're doing because it's, it's not so much a machinist anymore as it is a programmer. They both are hand in hand. Yeah. But. Technology and fancy <laughs> so, so my background started in building trash containers and trash trucks 50 years ago, but doing the same thing we're doing here. Yeah. You ready to be a welder? <laughs>